All right, Debo Samuel is a guy who made it clear yesterday that he wants to be traded by the 49ers, and there are all sorts of theories ricocheting around the NFL, whether it is he wants more money than the 49ers have offered, he doesn't like his role, or he just doesn't want to live in California, or some combination of the three. There was a tweet from Debo Samuel last night that was deleted within an hour later that only he and his agent, Tory Dandy, and the 49ers know the real reason. So, now that we know that Debo Samuel is potentially in play. And there was a report yesterday from Connor Hughes of The Athletic that the 49ers have zero intention to trade Debo Samuel, which means that the door is open. There's a You have to change their intention. Here's Joe Douglas, the general manager of the Jets, on the possibility of making a deal for Debo Samuel. Probably the, the one that's on everybody's mind is kind of what happened yesterday with the news coming breaking that Debo has asked for a trade. Um, have you guys made a call for San Francisco? Is that a market that you're involved in? Uh, Rex, you got this one. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was going to do that one with the by Felicia uh, reference, um, but uh, really, really no specifics. Uh, can't get into specifics uh, when it comes to a player that's not not on our roster. Um, you know, I just say that. Uh, since since coming here, I've made it known my job is to get the team better, and uh, we're going to do that via any avenue we can. Obviously, a few weeks ago, you made that run at Tyreek Hill. Um, would it be fair to say that the veteran receiver market is still something you're interested in? Yeah, it's, so, again, if the opportunity, I know we talked to, about it down in Florida, uh, and Mitch you down there, by the way, but um, uh, if the right opportunity presents itself, um, you know, we're, we're, we are going to be aggressive. Hey, look, if we're going to go pop culture references at these pre-draft press conferences, let's skip pack, past by Felicia. Joe Douglas just needs to rip the sleeves off of that shirt and start saying, get her done. Because, uh. I mean, that's Larry the Cable <laughs> guy. I don't know whatever happened to that guy. Maybe he is yeah. the general manager of the Jets now with a shirt that has sleeves all the way down. <laughs> I think he keeps it buttoned to the wrist like he did, so there's no temptation to just grab that sleeve and rip it off entirely and go full Cable guy. But, uh you know, they can't say anything. There it is. There it is. I'm serious. That's Larry the Cable Guy's shirt with the sleeves stitched onto it, it and he's got a hat on with to make hat. himself a little, make it a little less obvious with the hat on. But uh, they can't say anything about Debo Sam. He was under contract with another team. But I, you can say you're not interested. That's one of the realities of the tampering rules. And, and I tried to have a conversation, I think, with Jerry Jones at one point about this. I was asking him about someone years ago. And, and I was saying, you know, tampering rules say you can't say you're interested, but you can say you're not. Are you willing to just tell me you're not? And he wouldn't go there. But but I think you technically can say we have no interest. Uh, but it's a safer practice just to not comment on anyone who's not under contract with your team. But it sure sounds like there's potentially something there. And we know they tried to get Tyree Kill. As I said yesterday, the wallet is open to go out and spend the draft capital and the money to get a receiver why would they not be thinking about Debo Samuel? Well, my question is, would Debo, Debo Samuel be thinking about the Jets? Because Tyreek Hill, I mean, the Jets were interested in Tyreek Hill, but he completely dismissed that proposition. Like, he was not going to the Jets. He wanted to go to Miami. And my question would be, why would any good receiver want to go to the Jets? Do you know what Zach Wilson is? And I know what you're going to say. Do we know what two is? No, we really don't. But, hey, you're living in Miami. I get it. But with the Jets, Mike, you don't know what Zach Wilson is. You don't know what he's going to become. And if you're a receiver, does that appeal to you? I'm not sure it does. Of all those teams that are among the betting favorites, I mean, I would rather go to the Packers, the Saints, or the Eagles, probably the Packers for sure, because you'd be the number one receiver and you'd be playing with Aaron Rodgers. So if he gets a choice, I realize he doesn't have a no-trade clause, but players have power now, and they can determine where they want to go. So... If it's true that he doesn't want to play in California, he's going to have a say if the 49ers truly are interested in trading him and where he ends up because he can just say, hey, I'm not going to go there. Yeah, and look, the the 49ers, I don't think under any set of circumstances will be trading Debo Samuel to the Packers. I'm stunned that they're so high on the list because you're going to have to convince the 49ers to do it and you have to convince the Packers to do something out of character. And, and again, Oh, we were going to pay De uh, Devontae Adams more than the Raiders offered. Baloney. That was when they had a gun to their head yeah, right. with the Raiders offer. They, they could have paid him that money back in November, December. I've said that before. I, I'm intrigued by the Panthers. I mean, if he wants to go home and home is South Carolina, 
Yeah. We, we were trying to come up with a trade proposal earlier today that would consist of Debo Samuel plus Jimmy Garoppolo for Sam Darnold plus, and we were kicking around DJ Moore or Robbie Anderson. Somebody suggested today, a, a, a reader slash viewer emailed Christian McCaffrey plus Sam Darnold for Debo Samuel and Jimmy Garoppolo. I still think the Panthers would have to throw some picks onto the pile to get it done. But if Debo wants to go home, and and look, at a time when David Tepper's got all those people in North and South Carolina pissed off at him about the Rock Hill project that he walked away from, bringing Debo Samuel back to Charlotte, that would be something if that's something that they're interested in. And Scott Fitterer came from Seattle. He knows a thing or two about what Debo Samuel can do, although Samuel wasn't a superstar when Fitterer was there. I, I think that would be awesome if they could pull it off. But But again, if this is about geographic location, then – the closer you get to wherever he wants to live, and I just assume it's South Carolina, then then uh, the better chance you have of getting it done. And, and we'll see. And, you know, Shereen, I don't expect to hear much of anything about this over the course of the next week because of something I said earlier today. If yeah. the 49ers are going to emerge from this with a first-round pick, whether it's the Jets' number four, the Jets' number 10, somebody else's first-round pick, whatever the case may be, you don't want that pick until that pick's on the clock. You don't want to give the rest of the teams a week, five days, two days, even one day, even one hour to sit there and wonder who you're going to take and what it may take to leapfrog you and get the guy that you want to take. So get that pick when it's on the clock. And uh, so that's why I think nothing happens until next Thursday night. But once we start getting teams on the clock, there's always a chance the commissioner is going to walk out to the podium, get booed, and then announce that there's been a trade by the team on the clock with the 49ers, and we find out Debo Samuel is now a member of the team that had that pick that the 49ers end up exercising. And Mike, we did this exercise, I don't know, a few months ago about how many players truly are untradeable in the NFL, and there's not very many. And he's one guy you can say, I have no intention of trading, and you get a deal that you just can't walk away from, then you're going to trade him. So every player, including Kyler Murray, if somebody steps up on draft day and offers some three first-rounders, I would almost guarantee you Arizona's going to trade Kyler Murray for three first-round draft picks if that's what somebody's willing to offer. I don't expect that to happen, but I guarantee you they would pull the trigger on that deal. And another thing, Mike, it's really interesting to me that these players use their social media accounts to do these cryptic tweets or cryptic posts on Instagram or whatever it is, and... For instance, Debo Samuel, like the one he deleted. Well, tell us the real story. Tell us that you've asked for a trade. Tell us why. Because all we're left with are questions of why do you want to leave? Is it because you don't like California? Is it because you want more money, which I'm sure he does on top of everything else, but maybe he doesn't like the way he's used. Maybe he doesn't like the quarterback he's playing with and wants an upgrade. So put it out there. I mean, if you have a format now where you can go on and say why, so go on and say why you want to be traded if you truly want to be traded. If you don't want to be traded, say that too. There's the tweet yesterday that Debo Samuel posted at 5.19 p.m. It was gone by 10, 15 after 6 or thereabouts. And uh, this was also deleted. Hilarious. Man said, because I want to be close to home. That was from his Instagram story, they're telling me. But again, but again, Schefter, uh, uh, Sims heard the same thing, that, that it's a, an issue of not wanting to live in California. But, but who knows at this point? And the fact that Debo is tweeting and deleting or making comments on Instagram and wiping them out, I have a feeling he's being advised, just don't rock the boat at this point. If you want to have any chance to get traded, don't make the 49ers look bad. Don't throw rocks. Don't agitate. We have to be very delicate. We have to be very deliberate. We have to be very strategic. And the more we say, maybe the greater chance the 49ers say to us, you're not getting traded. So we'll see how it plays out. Obviously, there's a reason for this. And I said yesterday, and I still stand by this, the 49ers have some responsibility for the fact that Debo Samuel doesn't want to be there anymore. They misread something. They did or said yeah. something they shouldn't have done or said. They failed to do or say something they should have done or said. They had this happen right under their noses. The Debo Samuel wakes up one day and says, I want to be traded because you don't just literally wake up one day and have this idea pop into your head 
and you act on it. It's the culmination of something that's been building. And shame on the 49ers for either causing it or not preventing it or not noticing it because the mere fact that one of your most important players wants out is a failure on the pass-fail standard of getting along with your players. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.